Cool, so after quite a hiatus actually, uh, I'm back and we're going to be doing uh, linear transformations now from chapter 6-1 and this chapter, I think change of basis is where we start losing people, uh, or, like just basis in general and then change of basis and then linear transformations just uh, is where if, if you're just hanging on to the boat at this point and uh, linear transformations is where uh, the boat speeds away from you and you're by yourself in the middle of the ocean so let's dive in and the first type of problem we're going to talk about in this video then is uh, the following problem then is to determine if the following fall la 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 fall Lowing is a linear transformation. Okay. So they'll give you some map, okay, and you'll have to determine if the map is a linear transformation. So, for example, let's say I have the map T, all right, that sends something in M3R to R. Okay, and T is defined by T of A is equal to trace A. Okay, so let's go through this notation first of all and see exactly what this means. So this T here, uh, this is the name of the function. Okay, so T is just the name of the function. M3R on the left side of this arrow, this is the input vector space. So what I'm doing then is the function t takes in something, an input from M3R, okay? So we can only input three by three matrices into this function t. And R then is the output vector space, okay? So that's, that's what this first line is telling us about. And the second line here then is what the function actually does. So the function takes an A. So you'll notice A is actually, let's actually use the correct color here. A is N M3R. So A is gonna be a three by three real matrix. And the output then, the function T takes the trace of A. And you see that since the trace of A is just one number, then the trace of A is in R. And so what we have to evaluate now is we have to determine if T is a linear transformation. And so how do we do that? Well, in these types of problems, the biggest thing we have to do is play with the definitions. So the big idea for this type of problem is to play with the definitions and so what do I mean well why well, well I mean this okay so to show that this is a linear transformation what do I have to do well the definition of a linear transformation right what's the definition of a linear transformation and I'm going to abbreviate linear transformation linear transformation as lin trans uh, most of the time okay uh, the definition of a linear transformation is that T of A plus B is equal to T of A plus T of B, right? And then T of KA is equal to K T of A, where A, B are in the input vector spaces and K is a scalar, right? So that's the definition of a linear transformation. And so to determine if this guy up here is a linear transformation, we have to show this. So we have to play with the definition of a linear transformation. And how are we gonna do that? Well, we'll do the following. So I need to show that T of A plus B equals T of A plus T of B. So let's say I have A and B are matrices in M3R, right? A and B, are in my input vector space, 
because from the definition, A and B have to be in the input vector space, right? So A and B are matrices in M3R. And so I want to show what T of A plus B is, right? Well, T of A plus B by this second line, right? By the second line up here, by this second line right here, it says that T of A is equal to trace A. Well, now imagine if I replaced this A with A plus B. Well, that means T of A plus B must equal the trace of A plus B, right? T of A is equal to the trace of whatever's in the parentheses. And so since in the parentheses, I have A plus B, then I must have A plus B in the trace here. Okay, cool. So T of A plus B is equal to the trace of A plus B. Okay, but does this automatically then equal T of A plus T of B? Well, we're kind of jumping steps if we go from here to here. So we need to show intermediate steps to show that we actually get T of A plus T of B. And how do we do that? Well, we realize that trace, the trace of A plus B is actually equal to the trace of A plus the trace of B, okay? And this is a property of trace. It should be in uh, your notes. You guys should cover it in class. Uh, it's also in the book somewhere. Not exactly sure where, but probably when they mention trace. So the trace of A plus B is equal to the trace of A plus the trace of B. And then, oh, what do we realize now? Well, the trace of A, right? The trace of A, this is equal to TA, right? That's exactly what we defined up here. The trace of A is equal to TA. And then the trace of B is equal to TB, right? Because if I replace this A up here, with a B, then this A has to get replaced with a B as well. So, again, don't just think of A and B, right? These are just temporary placeholders for a matrix. Like A and B are a three by three matrix, except we just don't know what they are. So they're just a general three by three matrix at this point. So we got the trace of A plus trace of B. Well, that means that this is T of A plus T of B, right? So now we have shown that T of A plus B is equal to T of A, T of B. So we're done with the first step of the definition, okay? So again, we couldn't jump from here to here because you have to show this intermediate step where you show that each individual component is equal to uh, T of A and T of B. So you can't just jump from this step up here down here. Uh, you won't get full points, uh, let's say on a quiz or on a homework. All right, what's the second part? So this is the first part. The second part then I have to show that T of KA, right, is equal to KT of A. So now let's say I have a matrix A, a three by three matrix A, and I have the T of KA. Well, what is that? Well, that's the trace of the constant k times a, right? k is a constant. k is a constant, right? And what is the trace of k? Well, I can just factor out k from the trace. Again, this is another property of trace, right? So now I have k times the trace of a, but what is the trace of a? Well, like above here, the trace of a is actually ta Right, remember, T of A is equal to trace A, right? T of A is equal to trace A. And so now I have K times T of A, and therefore I've shown the second one. So this is a linear transformation. Okay? So the trace of a matrix is a linear transformation. Um, and this is how you show it. So again, we can't, we can't just go from this step to this step. You can't pull, well, 
yeah, you can't just say that k uh, trace of ka is equal to k times t of a. You have to show this intermediate step first, where you explicitly get right k times t a by you know splitting each part up. So the idea then again is just to play with the definitions. Remember, the big idea is to play with the definitions. And why is that the big idea? Well, look, here we played with the definition of trace, right? From this step to this step is by the definition of trace, right? And from this step to this step is also by the definition of trace, right? It's by a property or property, right? By definition of, or property of trace. So you just gotta play with definitions. You gotta play with the properties of whatever you're trying to find. And you have to show each step in getting to a linear transformation.